My name is Dr. Gabriel Bolaños. I am Assistant Professor of Music Composition here at ASU. And today I'd like to introduce you to spectralism. Uh, many people refer to spectralism as a style of, uh, of um, concert music, uh, but I think it's a lot more nuanced, a lot more complex than just a style. It's really a philosophy or a way of thinking about uh, music composition. Um, spectral music originated in France in the 1970s, uh, largely influenced by these two composers, uh, Gerard Griset and Tristan Murai. Uh, Tristan used to teach at Columbia University. I had the opportunity to, to, to study orchestration with him, uh, and that's when I became a little bit more familiar with this style of music. Um, both of these composers, Murai and Griset, uh, studied with uh, Messiaen, who was a very influential French composer. Um, and they were uh, relatively young in their 20s, uh, in the 70s, and they had become disenfranchised with uh, the state of contemporary uh, concert music at the time. They really weren't interested in serialism. Um, they were not interested in looking to the past for inspiration, so they really rejected things like neoclassical and neoromantic uh, musical trends. Um, and they re really weren't interested in American um, minimalism either. Uh, and so they were looking for new sources of inspiration to try to move forward. Uh, to try to engage with music in different ways. They were both really, also really concerned with uh, perception and psychoacoustics, uh, at which they felt that a lot of serial music that was really concerned with uh, these intricate, almost puzzle-like structures, uh, a lot of serial music had sort of lost touch with, uh, with the audience in the sense that serial composers weren't really uh, concerned, that concerned with the uh, the psychoacoustics or the perception um, of uh, the way a composition is put together. Um, so Grisey and Mirai became uh, really interested in timbre. And um, during the 1970s, access, access to computers became a little bit more uh, available. Um, and they began to experiment with something called spectral analysis, which is um, a way to really precisely analyze audio recordings. And with these tools, uh, which I'll demonstrate in a little, in just a second, uh, with these tools, they were able to dig really, really deeply into uh, into sound, to look at and to understand, um, and to analyze the the complex timbres of sound. And they began to extrapolate those timbres and sort of look really deep into the acoustic properties of sound as a way to generate um, melody, harmony, even form in their compositions. So this spectralism is a style of music that uh, is almost completely independent or a rejection of tonality. Uh, there's no, there are no major minor triads. There's no harmonic function. Um, it's also a rejection of the like formalist serial music that was really prominent during the 1970s. Uh, and it's looking for a new sort of path forward, a new way of engaging with sound. Um, so one of the big tools that the spectral composers relied on is um, spectral analysis, looking at sonograms. Uh, so here I have a couple sounds that we can analyze. We're not obviously going to analyze all of them, uh, but we have, for example, a trumpet uh, playing uh, C4, pianissimo. So of course we hear that as a single note, as a C4. I'm going to drag and drop this into the software called Spear. Um, this is free software if you'd like to download it. Uh, you can go to just look up Spear um, and you're able to download and look at and interact with actually um, the uh, components of sound right here. So this is the sound we just heard. When I play that back, what you're hearing is not actually the recording. This is a resynthesis of that recording. And each of these lines are different overtones um, in that sound. The darkness of the line uh, represents the relative amplitude or the volume of that particular overtone. You he this stuff right here is just um, sort of background noise. It's not, not really relevant. And you can see it's really light. It's not terribly audible. Uh, this axis right here is frequency from zero hertz. And we can see up to 2,000. You can scroll all the way up. And this axis right here is time. 
measured in seconds. So if uh, I were to hit play, you see it kind of plays it like a normal, uh, like a normal audio file. Now the interesting thing and the important thing about this is if I were to hover the mouse over one of these darker lines and you look down here, you can see the note and the corresponding frequency. So this is a C4. That's the note that we hear. This is a C5, an octave above. This is a G5, an octave up and a fifth above this. Uh, here's another C, here's an E, here's a G, uh, here's a little uh, B flat. Uh, so actually all of these pitches are present in the sound of the trumpet. Another way to think about this and uh, something that became apparent in the 1970s when Grise and Mirai began experimenting with this is that uh, this complex sound, the sound of the trumpet, can actually be conceptualized and represented as just a collection of simple sine waves. A sine wave is a tone that has no overtones whatsoever. Let me demonstrate what a sine wave uh, sounds like. I'm going to delete everything except for the lowest pitch. So that's the fundamental, the lowest frequency uh, in that uh, harmonic series that we heard. And this is the whole thing. So uh, here, I'll play the second one just so you can hear it. Invert selection, delete. It's an octave above. If we do the same, you'll hear the octave and the fifth above, above the fundamental so on and so forth. This might be, some of you might already be familiar with the overtone series. Um, as you can see, <clears throat> this follows uh, just a simple overtone series, which I'll explain in a little bit more detail in another video. Um, but what I wanted to demonstrate with this quick um, analysis is that this complex tone, it, you can actually break it down into uh, a series of simple sine waves. And what's really important in our perception of the timbre of this trumpet is obviously the pitches and the frequencies of these overtones, but it's also the relative amplitude of all of these overtones. So we have here uh, a trumpet playing the note C4, playing ordinario. If we have a, let's say a trumpet with a Harmon mute, let's analyze this sound. It's a little bit of a shorter sound, but you can, if we were to compare these, you can see it's still got quite a loud fundamental, but then here, let me put these right next to each other so that you can uh, compare them a little bit more easily. The fundamental is still kind of loud. These are much quieter. This is much, you know, these uh, partials up here are quite a bit louder than the ordinario one. Let's analyze uh, another one really quickly just to see what's going on here. Here's a, same trumpet playing with a cup mute. Notice how now the cup mute, the fundamental is really low. Really low amplitude. It's a lot quieter. You can see this is a gray line. It's much lower in amplitude or in volume than this one or than the Harmon mute. These three are pretty loud and then it cuts out quite a bit up here. So the difference between these three samples the Ordinario. Let me redo the Harmon just so that you can hear the difference. Ordinario, the Harmon, and the um, that's the Harmon as well, and here's the cup. So, as you can tell, the three are the same pitch. All of them are playing a C4. The only difference is the timbre or the tone or the color of the of the instrument. And that color you see here can be really clearly and easily visualized uh, with this spectral analysis. This was a very important breakthrough in the 1970s. Um, and these two composers, Griset and Mirai, decided to take advantage of this um, and explore various ways of applying this sort of uh, uh, information, this access to really, really 
um, precise analysis of sound uh, in their music composition. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit more um, spectral analysis, and we're going to look at some ways that Grise and Mirai uh, use these uh, these concepts in their compositions.